again, something to do with the memory sticks and a lot of things we use in everyday life. Let me find my clicker. Uh, and we are talking about accessories we are so used to have in our lives that we don't anymore see them existing. Sometimes these accessories might go evil. So first of all, Internet of Things is coming. But even before Internet of Things is coming, USB is everywhere. USB is in every device we use today. It is in the computers, it's the memory sticks, it's the printers, it's the video cameras, it's your toys, it's your toaster very soon. Actually, it probably is already in your toaster because somehow the software has to get in. It's in your hotel door. If you look the hotel door underneath, it's usually you see there a small USB port. So it's everywhere. We are having USB everywhere. And Internet of Things is going to put it even, any, even more everywhere. Sometimes it is in a, hiding in a plain sight. We are thinking USB sometimes it's only a charger. It is your wall plug to charge your mobile phone or your gadgets. Sometimes it's completely invisible. Inside of your laptop, there is a small USB network. Your device is like the web camera in, in the top of the screen. That actually is a USB device. Your keyboard, that might be a USB device. Your touchpad you use to emulate mouse, that might be a USB stick. So we have a lot of USB devices which we don't even know as a normal users are actually USB devices. And there's no way of us to get rid of those. However, even if you have a USB disk, it's never just a disk. It actually is a small computer. It is a small computer which responds to the comments of the computer saying, could you please give me this access to this information, or please store this information for me. And as a computer, it's executing a program inside of it called firmware. So it is reprogrammable. Most of them are. And this is the problem. How you program these devices when they're programmable? You program them over the USB. So you actually are using an untrustworthy channel, an untrustworthy channel, to send the command control to this device. Now, that is a huge problem. All of a sudden, we have a lot of security issues. The uh, USB devices can be many things. Again, they can be storage printer, whatnot, and they can change their mind. They can talk to multiple ways to the computer. They might be sending an audio stream. They might control the keyboard they, uh, and mouse. They might uh, send a data transfer function. They can make Bluetooth or network adapter. And when they change their mind, you as a user not necessarily don't know about it. Also, we have no way of knowing uh, that it is uh, the same device as it was used before, because the standard itself is limiting away from the, having a serial number. So we are blindly trusting the stick which we use and plug into our computer. Now, when I say it changes in mind, it means that at any time, the device can tell, the memory stick can tell, oh, by the way, I'm keyboard 2. I'm mouse 2. Oh, I'm actually your secondary screen. So please send me a copy of your screen. Of course, these USB devices, even when the computer is small, it has a lot of horsepower. And more horsepower is coming to USB sticks all, every day. Also, it can learn things. It will know what is the host operating system. Is it Windows? Is it Mac? Is it uh, Linux? It also knows, oh, it's nothing. It's not yet even started. Because when you power up the computer, the USB sticks come alive way faster than your computer. And it learns, oh, it might be a situation where the computer is just looking for what to start. So that's a little bit scary. It knows what you're doing. It can learn you what you're doing. And it can control you. So when it has all that knowledge, it can, again, change its behavior. You might have an empty USB stick where you have your Word documents and PowerPoint presentations, maybe even this presentation. And then you boot your computer. Your USB to see, uh, stick says, oh, the computer says, I'm going down. Next thing it learns is, oh, the operating system is not anymore there. It is now a BIOS. And BIOS is looking for a computer to, uh, operating system to boot. It can change its mind. 
If you remember 10 years ago, there was a lot of problem where you have a virus on the USB stick that accidentally booted from there and infected your computer. Now this is different. The USB stick can say, oh, I actually have a hidden partition here, a hidden disk. When it's starting, remember, it can be a keyboard. It can start typing F8, F10, F12, and tell the computer, don't start from the hard drive. Start from me. And when it does that, it, it enables a specified programming to take over, which will modify your operating system. It will modify your disk. And remember, now it's taking over the computer before the computer has really started, before the operating system is started, which means all your defense programs, none of that is alive. They haven't been started yet. That's scary. The other thing which is interesting is, because it's a, it's a, a uh, device which learns from, uh, from a computer, it can be, have a many different triggers and learn and change its behavior based on what you are doing. So the features which are malicious are hidden. You cannot see them. There's no way of knowing what it's going to do next because your actions are determining how the USB stick is going to be behaving next. And it can change mine all the time. It can also say, as I said before, it can say I'm a Bluetooth device, or it can say I'm a network device. For example, Windows has a very interesting feature. If you have a Wi-Fi connection and a device says, I'm, by the way, wireline connection, Windows is always preferring wireline connection first. So all of a sudden, the computer decides without changing, without telling the user it's changing its mind, it's starting to divert some of the traffic based on the USB's actions. This enables a interesting ways of having a man in the middle attacks. So for example, the device all of a sudden says, hey, by the way, I'm a wireline. Please listen to me. But instead of wanting to have all the connectivity going to itself, it says, I actually only want to change a few things. For example, I want to tell where the bank is. And after that, you can log to your bank or bank looking site. And you're actually not talking to your bank. You are talking to an imposter site. That is scary. So what it looks like is this. We have a Windows computer running. And we ask, what is the IP address of SLUS? It gives the right answer. The USB stick, which has all the time being there, all of a sudden decides, maybe I want to take it over. And invisibly it changes the IP address of a DNS server, which affects how the uh, computer finds an address. And all of a sudden, without anything the user can know or see, you are now talking to the address of the attacker's choice. You burn and crash and burn after that. So the other thing is that when you reprogram a USB stick, you have no way of going back to safety. The USB stick after that, any time you want to clean it, it says, oh, I accept the new operating system to the stick. And it's lying to you. You cannot trust it. It can affect any operating system. We have already a, a proof of concept virus, which is done by the good guys, to show that you have a USB stick which is affecting, which is infecting Windows computer, going next, next and reprogramming another USB stick, jumping from there to Mac, jumping back to another USB stick, jumping back to Linux computer. And every single device it affects. You have no way of finding out that it's, it's actually infected. It also can go to other devices than the, than the blockable. Remember I told you before that the web camera inside of your computer laptop is a USB device. So it can go there hide. It programs the, USB, the camera's USB device saying, this is the malicious payload. Sleep there. And when you see I'm not anymore alive on a computer side, put me back there. It means you take your laptop, which you know and uh, suspect it's, it's uh, infected. You remove the hard drive. You throw the hard drive away. You put a clean hard drive in. You take your original installation disk of the operating system. You plug it in. You install it clean. You have a clean operating system. Until 12 hours later, your web camera decides, not so much. I don't like clean. I like a little bit dirty. And puts the malware back into place. 
So these kind of attacks are very persistent. So whether it's a USB stick or whether it's a device in, which is embedded into your system, you have no way of knowing whether it's infected and what's going on. Really scary stuff. And again, you cannot trust the device because it will always lie to you. What really is problematic is that we have a already in open source a Android program which will turn your mobile phone to be evil device. So now, when you are asking your friend, can you just get a little bit juice? Can I load my, charge my mobile from your laptop? All of a sudden, it's your phone which will attack your computer. And it can, again, do all the bad things. It can infect it. It can take over the network. It can do whatever it wants. There is absolutely no way that you should be allowing anyone to, uh, to charge so you would allow anybody to plug their mobile phone to your computer. And actually, there is the link, SRLabs.de, the bad USB. That is the link where you can get download the proof of concept for Android program, which will do, do all the bad things to your computer when you are just innocently asking, can I charge my phone? And again, since a USB device, it can also take over the keyboard, type on your behalf, it can become a mouse, it can actually take over your screen and send the screen to a remote attacker who can literally, real time, look over your shoulder and see what's in your screen. So what is the takeaway? Uh, first of all, this is a very flexible attack. Second thing is, even if you have a, just a charger, actually most, most of the chargers have a microcomputer inside also. So it's talking with your mobile phone, it's talking with your device to say how much, how much juice you want, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what we found out in the research is there's five manufacturers of, of microchips for a USB charger in the world. Four out of the five are vulnerable. Four of the five can be turned so that your innocent looking charger is actually attacking your mobile phone. There's no way of knowing whether that USB, is, the charger is infected or not, not without destructive testing. So you cannot ever be certain if it's, uh, if it's uh, clean or not. So never share a, char uh, a charger. So until USB is very useful, I mean, I couldn't think about a life without USB device. What can you do? First of all, carry your own battery. If, don't ever loan a somebody else's charger. Don't ever ask, some, can I charge my phone from your laptop? Use your own. Never share this one either, because this is also having the small computer, and it can be charged. The other thing which is uh, which we're going to do, and this is the new opportunity, there's a huge market which is looking for a solution. This is not a bug. This is a part of the standard. This is the way USB was designed to work. So we need to have a hardware solution. At least, even if we get a good software solution, we still need a hardware solution too. There are a number of companies and parties who are developing something which is called USB condom or a programmable cheap open source hardware. So there's a huge opportunity to go look for the work done by others to develop a tools and make your own solutions. This is a green field where everyone is on the same line. And also, all the tools developed today are also useful for the bad guys. So it's a race. But it, 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 we are talking of tens of billions of dollars of annual revenue, which is going to be coming to this new market and this, uh, fight to this, uh, up these um, threats. So there, uh, I'm doing a little bit of work that I just wanted to give a credit for the people who have been the massive amount of work. You can check these people out. Awesome results, wonderful proof of concept stuff, etc. So let's be careful out there. We don't anymore have the opportunity to trust our own USB devices. Think about what you do with your USB. Thank you. <laughs>